Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Today we're going to spend some nice time together in a soothing, relaxing and mindful painting activity with watercolors. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing and uh, click on the link for notifications so you will be notified every time that I publish a new video. Now, if you are very like if you are a beginner and you never painted with watercolors before, I highly encourage you to check my previous video Video, mostly one that I published more or less 10 months ago, the color wheel, in which we paint together a beautiful big flower turning into the color wheel. That nice activity will prepare you and will give you nice foundations for familiarize with the watercolor and mostly with the color theory, like dividing the colors into primary, secondary, tertiary, warm and cold, analogous and complementary, and see how these colors interact with each other. However, if you feel that you want to jump in and try this activity, go for it. I will do my best to explain you step by step, and we are going to review some nice tip about colors and color wheels while we paint together. We're going to paint a beautiful uh, landscape as we did other times. So this time, we're going to try something a little different, so we try to use the space in a different way and create something that is still harmonic and balanced, but without that perfect division between the foreground, middle ground and background, we're going to in fact elevate the line of the horizon and create a high line of the horizon landscape and see what happens. Remember that you have to adapt this practice to your own needs and your own feeling. So you know yourself, if you are like a more advanced, you can add details that compared to what I do, you don't have to follow exactly what I do. You can add the details so you can go a little faster. If you are more of a beginner, you maybe can eliminate some details and keep like things very simple and you can go slow. You can pause the video every time that you want or you can watch the video and then practice after it at your own convenience. I, however, suggest you to practice with me because there are important tips and important like advices and explanations that I will give you during the practice itself. For today's project you need the watercolor paper or your watercolor journal, uh, any brush that you have available, the more the better. We are gonna, I'm gonna work on a pretty small watercolor journal so we don't have to do a huge painting. If you have a bigger paper you can divide the paper in a half or you can kind of reframe inside the paper so you uh, reduce the space so just because otherwise you will feel maybe overwhelmed if you have too much to paint, right? Um, a pencil for drawing, an eraser just in case, paper towel just to tap the brush if you think that it's too wet. In this practice specifically, we are controlling the amount of water. We know and we learned in the past that there are different techniques with watercolors, but for this one in particular, we want to control the amount of water. So as I was saying, brushes, I will go with small, small, medium, very tiny, and then if you would like to enhance and support some of the implied textures, some of the outlines and patterns with an extra fine permanent black markers. Can be any brand that you have available. Of course, my favorite are micro markers, the Japanese um, markers. They are extremely good, definitely more expensive than Sharpies, but they do a better job. You also can select a, uh, within a variety of tips, so you will go from a really, really, really extra fine to something that a little thicker. But remember, friends, that the process is more important than the final product. We are here to learn together, to relax, to cut some time for ourselves, to step maybe out of your comfort zone if you're not familiar with painting. So even if the final product is not exactly as mine or not exactly as you picture in your mind, the process is extremely valuable. So enjoy, take your break. If you don't have like a, such a long time, you can divide the practice in three times. So the first part of the video, we draw together, then you can pose it, another day you can paint, and another day you can do details and extra fine uh, outlines. So you know you, and you know your schedule, you know your needs, and I want you to be flexible. And I will try to do the same and to guide you at the best of my ability. I'm gonna switch the camera so we can get ready. And in the description box, you will find all the details of the materials that is needed for today. 
Okay, guys, here we are. This is my journal. As you see, it's not very big. So as I say, you can cut your paper, you can frame it. Or if you want to try something a little bigger, go for it. So we're going to sketch first with the pencil. Follow my steps. I know that the pencil is going to show very light because it is important for you to do the same. We're not going to press hard on the paper and have a very thick and hard lines. We're going to keep our lines nice, dynamic and very light. I'm going to trace a pretty high line of the horizon and this line of the horizon is not going to be perfectly straight it's going to be a natural line of the horizon so go ahead and do the same then uh, to kind of intensify this illusion of three-dimensionality and this illusion of space we're going to like uh, create a nice curved line so you start from, you, you take a point in the horizon and you do these nice lines. And then we're going to do another parallel lines to this one. Proceed with dynamic lines. And it opens up on the front. Something to give us this idea of the space. Now, I think that between this point of uh, like the vanishing point this is how we call it i'm gonna create a couple of small houses this time they will be much smaller than the one that we usually did together because they are pretty far away remember that whatever is in the foreground is bigger because it's closer to our eyes whatever is in the mid middle ground little smaller and in the background even smallest now today our line of the horizon is high so the details are definitely smaller I'm gonna create, you see, it's like a, just a square, rectangles, maybe we're gonna do a silo over here. I love country side um, landscape. It's just that they, they make me feel very cozy and relaxed. And so this is why I like to paint them. We're gonna create a couple of different roof to create some variety small details you can change anything that you want to do differently remember it's like uh, it's not that we have to do exactly everything exactly the same And now we are going to, with very scribbling lines, it's really technically a scribble, we're going to add some details so that then we are going to um, support through our painting, for example. We want to have some bushes, some plants, some trees, and we're going to play with some different sizes, right? For example, I'm going to put a tree near the house. You see, I'm not pressing hard at all on the paper. I really proceed with scribbling lines. Remember that we are sketching. Everything is going to be done then with um, the painting. And also remember that we create optical illusion, my friends. It's not that we are painting one single leaves at a time or we have to draw one single leaves at a time. We're going to give the impressions of leaves, right? So these are two pretty big trees. One is kind of almost behind the house to play a little more we're going to create a lot of attention on that this beautiful line of the horizon that is the focal point of our picture maybe behind we can add a little like heel so you go with a sort of a diagonal and curved line here and another one that start from the back You can create some texture that then you will support with your painting. And the texture really, my friends, they are very dynamic line. You see I'm moving the pencil, sketching some lines. Here, we are going to do it then with the painting, but just for you to understand, of course, over here, which is the foreground, our grass or plants or whatever you want to have that will be taller, right? And then little by little, they will reduce their size. 
all the way until we can barely define them, right? When you will paint on top with watercolor, you will still be able to see a little bit of the pencil, which I personally like that much because it's kind of supported the value, darker, lighter area that we are now learning and we know that is very important, right? We don't want to have a, um, all plain colors, like all the same tones or the same tint or the same shade because it would not be of any interest, right? We want to add the value that gives that really three-dimensional idea, support and enhance implied texture, and just make the painting look better, I would say, and more interesting, more dynamic. So you can have fun and do these like little strokes with the pencil. It's also very fun and very relaxing. It's just for you, this is gonna help you. One day you won't even need to do this with a pencil, but mostly if you are a beginner or intermediate, I think that this will help you because you will see with the pencil already your details and how big or how small they will be. We can amplify some texture in the very, very back, uh, scribbling, right? Maybe create a little bit more value already. You can dark up the bottom. It's like, a, you know, it's a good, good, good preparation for our watercolors. Mostly if I say, if you're learning, right? You need to really support yourself with the different steps, right? In the way that you know what when you when it's time for you to switch to watercolor, you know exactly what you are painting, where it's gonna look darker, what it's gonna look like uh, lighter. We're gonna add some texture on the road as well, right? This is a country road, so we don't want it to be too perfect. Of course, the scribble in the foreground will be bigger, right, than the one in the very back. We can amplify, we can add the, some nice value with the pencil, maybe side of the road a little darker, and then in the roof you can do the same if you wish to do so and create some nice texture. And now we are ready to paint and prep your materials and then you start. We're gonna wet the brush in the water and then we're gonna start our painting. You can start from anywhere you want. Maybe we can start at this time from the sky and you, can, you don't have to copy my choice of colors. As I always say, you have to do you. Think about the type of landscape that you would like, your personal connection with colors. If you would like to have a sort of a sunset and very warm sky as I'm, you know, I'm about to do. If you want to have instead a blue sky, you go for it. And then in this case, since the area that we're painting is a little bigger, you can lose the control a little bit. And so we're going to kind of dip the brush in the water before creating the color, so before brushing it on the color palette, and then also after. So you have it pretty wet, not too much though, because I want you to be able to still control it. Mostly when you go around, you see the, ha the house, the tree, so you wanna have control. You don't wanna have the color bleeding completely. Now, if that happens, let it dry. It's gonna dry pretty quickly and you can paint over. Is, you're going to still see it because watercolor, they are very different from acrylic. It's not that you can paint over with a light color on top of a darker, but it is okay. Remember that we are learning of embracing what happened, imperfections and little mistakes. They are part of the deal. They are part of the process. And remember that your focus is on learning the steps with me. So we prep our pages, we did our sketch, uh, do all the modification that you need to do from on your sketch, and then we are learning together. And so 
relax and if something happens and goes differently than you plan, embrace it. Don't start over, don't throw away the paper and don't feel frustrated or upset because you still did practices, you know, which is, it's what we are here for, right? We practice together, we become more familiar, we have fun, we embrace the unexpected and we make something out of it. It's kind of in life, right? You know, we make so much plans and, and then sometimes things go the way that they want to go. <laughs> and we cannot go back in time. So we're going to embrace it and see what we can do with it. I mix in pink with orange. Have fun. If you want to have it lighter, I want to have a very intense. I'm going to set the base with this orange. And then I will go with a hot pink maybe on top. But you can do you and just do all the modification. Remember that the steps can be learned and the technique can be learned regardless of your choices about the colors of the brand of a supplies that you have available. Of course, if you have expensive and more professional supplies, they're going to give you a better result. But I also, you know, if you don't know the technique, that is really nothing that very expensive brand of supplies can do. So I suggest you to work with something that is affordable and manageable for you and learn the technique very well. And then if you feel that it's really your passion and you really want to keep improving and progressing, you will invest the money in more expensive supplies. This is my advice. Sometimes I saw people that they were waiting to have everything perfect, all the supplies and everything, then they never started, right? So do it is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. Work with what you have and enjoy the process. Now I'm gonna pick a little more like a hot pink and mix it with a regular pink. Create a nice kind of creamy texture and then I will go over, not everywhere, but maybe I will just spread some of this pink to make this sky really, 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 really popping up and extremely warm. Definitely maybe not completely realistic, but Real, realism is not what I am, uh, it's not my goal. I look for my own personality in everything that I do and I really suggest you to do the same. Now, using like this hot pink and the orange, we are using basically the warm side of the color wheel and we are using some of the analogous colors. Just for reviewing, analogous colors are colors that, that sit next to each other in the color wheel and they support each other because they create a harmonic color palette, you know, like a similar color palette. They embrace each other and support each other. So without contrast, they will, because they are not contrasting each other, they are embracing each other, they will give us this beautiful, attractive point in our picture. Now I'm going to leave it like that. And as you see, they dry pretty quickly. Let's proceed and let's paint our middle ground. So the details that we have, you're going to do some green, brownish, everything that you want. If you want to like uh, um, go more for a specific season, maybe you can inspire yourself with the color of that season. You can do like uh, you can create your green and now if you do not have a lot of colors available in your palette let's say that you have just light green or dark green remember friends that you can mix other color you can mix a little bit of brown with the green to give you olive green or you can mix a yellow with your green to make it really bright and more like warm you can mix a little bit of black if you want a very, very dark and intense green. You can mix a little bit of gray if you want something that is a little more on the dull side. So just remember that we create our color and we mix our color. So don't, leave, don't feel limited because you have a limited palette because actually it's a very good way to experiment. And if you feel that you want to do more exercises, 
remember that as I told you in this in the introduction there is a beautiful video in which I guide you in painting the color wheel that is a fantastic exercise and then there are that is another video that I published months ago about value in color when we play around with tint and tones so that is going to be also a very good practice for you now I know that when we have a very like a bright sunset in the back everything should look much darker so I'm gonna try to dark it up a little bit but as I say I'm not here and I'm not really concerned about doing a, a realistic representation of a landscape I'm just what I want to do I want to have a practice that makes me play with colors enjoy the process become more familiar and confident with brush fine model skills with um watercolor technique and just have some time to reset after a very busy week so this is why this is my motivation to paint you need to find your own motivation to paint and you follow that one something that you know during uh, the winter i always do a uh, I display some of my painting uh, in a very nice uh, small gallery here in the mountains in Midwell, Utah. And there is a, um, a pretty, you know, it's locally, she's locally well-known art critique and uh, art and galleries curator. She owns her own gallery. I don't remember her name. I'm sorry, I'm so bad with names. Anyway, this old lady, she's so knowledgeable. And when I do the display, she always come a couple of times because the, the the usually my pieces stay up for a couple of months and she comes just to chat uh, about art about life and one lesson that i actually i learned from her is that uh, she told me you see the problem is that when people take uh, too many classes and they are so obsessed with the realism the perfect technique how they can perfectly represent nature they lose their own personality and their own style. So she told me, take the classes that you need, but don't take too many. And even if you take the classes that you need, sometimes don't listen exactly to this uh, perfection. It's like, you know, the teacher, but remember your personality. Remember what you want to uh, express and what is your personal connection with what you're doing. I say, you see, I like your, st your things because they have a style and... Uh, I can recognize them from others. I can identify that these are painted by the same artist, by you. But some other painting that they were displayed at the same gallery, they were incredibly beautiful landscape, extremely technically well done. But she said, now I'm confused. I don't know who painted what. So friends, I encourage you to do the same as I do for my students. It is important to know the technique and to do this practice and exercises, but always remember that you're doing art for yourself and you need to love what you do and you need to feel connected. So if you want to have a, I don't know, sometimes when my students say, can I have a rainbow sky? Can I have a city? Yes, why not? Like if you're exercise the fine motor skills or the type of technique or the type of media that I'm teaching them, I always let them free to add the switch and play with that practice because they will remember it much better and they will learning a treasure that, you know, the, the lessons much more than if I force them or if I force myself or you to do something exactly like it looks in the nature, exactly like uh, the rules tell us to do. That is not my uh, goal here. So go for your goal and don't change it. Now, to in order like for you to go and fill these tiny little spaces, if you notice, I am doing, a, I'm really barely touch the paper, very, very gently. There is no hard pressure. You need to be gentle. Mothering the pressure, it's extremely good. And uh, you will learn it. For some of you will be extremely natural. For some of you will take a little longer time. It's fine. Just remember, find yourself a good posture and a very, very tiny little brush, brush stroke at a time. 
don't add the pressure. This is such a good fine model skill that you will develop in doing these painting practices with me or by yourself. Feel free to change any colors that you want if you want your uh, houses to be a different color, if you want your trees to be lighter, even if we have a background that is ID the sunset, so my colors should be even darker than what I'm saying, but I, I just love to see color. I love to see colorful picture. I'm very neutral, like for furniture, house, or whatever, and clothes, but when I paint, I really go for it. Now, I went a little bit outside of the line for the the roof, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna let it like dry and then I will probably dark it up a little bit. If the colors bleed a little bit, it's totally fine. I think I'm gonna give this house a red door. As well. I am going to probably use a blue, a blue house, why not? I'm very passionate about houses and design, so I watch all the TV show available about constructions, makeover, you know, AGTV is my best friend. And when I do this landscape with you, I kind of uh, use that inspiration um, for what I paint. And I always picture, mm, what is the house? You see the color bled, you know, bleeded a little bit. It's fine. It's totally fine. I'm going to use the same darker blue to do these tiny little details that maybe you see. I'm scratching gently this brush on the silo. So just to create a little more like value and some interesting texture right we don't want everything to look so plain now for this one i will do a moderate color instead a more neutral i mix in like a sort of a i try to create a sort of a beige color so which is not really because it's more greenish but it's okay i will embrace this a little bit more water tap it on the paper and just once again very gentle pressure and if you cover some details it is totally fine remember that we're gonna do the fine the extra fine markers at the end so we can kind of retrieve some of the details the texture and the outline that we might lose during painting it's totally fine i think that on this one i'm going to create dark brown brick color for the door And I'm gonna use this to create a little bit more like darkness at the bottom of our house. I'm gonna do now this bush that I left for. Fine, I'm gonna use a bright green now. I just wanna play and see what happened. Nicely, you see I'm barely touching. Touch a scribble, touch a scribble with the brush. I'm gonna now grab a darker one because as we say, we don't wanna leave things that we just want tones. We wanna really kind of make sure that we always have variety, right? And value. Now it is time to, I'm gonna do the road and I'm gonna use a sort of a similar color to that one. Maybe mix it with some green, mix some brown, add some, you know, white. Uh, we don't want the, I don't want the country road to look too perfect. Uh, I want to be really see what happens. So I'm going to start uh, to paint. Don't worry if you go over the texture and the strokes that we create together with the pencil. Remember that we're going to retrieve those first uh, with watercolor. And then if you feel like doing it uh, also with, um, uh, the extra fine marker. So we kind of set the first base. 
more greenish over here. I'm gonna add a little bit of light gray and white. And we have a road set. And we're gonna let it dry. Now I'm gonna switch it to a little bigger mark, uh, brush and we're gonna paint this. In this case, we're gonna loose it up and uh, use more water. The intensity of the green is really up to you. Exactly what we say before, you can mix your light and dark green, you can add yellow to your green, you can add the gray or black if you want it extremely dark, you can really play around. You can mix some brown if you want more of an olive tree and just like play around. More water, as you see, at least for the first coat, and we gently, gently spread it around. Try to pay a little more attention when we come close to the to the road, but as we say, if something happens, we let it happen. We let it dry and then we're gonna make something out of it. I really like the contrast between this orange sky and this intense bright green uh, middle ground and foreground. I feel that they, you know, it creates such a beautiful balance. And now you see also when we use like a a higher line of the horizon so it would be a little unbalanced we can actually recreate the balance by using an extremely intense and warm uh, background for example or maybe a stormy sky like something intense that can capture the attention and they will have more like a, a, like intensity compared to the the rest of the the picture so We keep going. If you feel that the color is too intense, you can just dip the brush in the water again and not dip it again in the color and just go back where you were. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna make it slightly darker in the foreground just because it's sun, like it's closer to our eyes so we will perceive the color a little more dark a little darker a little more intense I'm gonna blend it through don't be afraid experiment oopsie and that's yes my left hand let's blend it just using some water we blend it together so you create this transition between a darker green all the way now we're gonna do the other side look how pretty it's becoming i really 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 love this um, the intensity of the the sky If you're not working on a journal, let the paper dry. And as I always advise to all my students here and in school, keep your stuff organized in a folder because it is important for you, even the practice that didn't go as you expected and they are not your favorite, you complete them and you keep them because it is an important reference for you for the future to see your improvement, the change in your style the change in your fine motor skills and the technique, so you keep them. Now that the road is dry, I'm gonna tap the brush and clean it a little bit. I would like to clean my white. I'm not gonna use too much water. I want the white to be as creamy as possible so I can go over and light it up a little bit. Of course, the white, as you can see, is not showing like white first because it's not super clean, <laughs> but also because the watercolor are still wet and so it's blending with the first coat of color that we set on the road. Oh, 
watercolors are definitely a little challenging because there is the element of water that sometimes, mostly when we are learning how to control and decide the right amount, can be a little challenging for that. But it is also so versatile and flexible because it gives us the opportunity to use it with different um amount of water so which will give us a different intensity and this is what I really like I'm gonna light up some part with the same creamy 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 white I'm just going, going very, very light uh, pressure to create some interest in the very far away background. It's like it, that we create the illusion that there are some spots that are uh, darker, some spots that they are lighter, like, you know, they have different type of grass, for example, or ground. And that will give us a little more variety, right? And more interest. Feel free to do more and in different spots if you like. kind of kind of cleaning the basically the brush from the leftover white creating these very gentle strokes here and there now i would like to use something bright coming from the windows kind of a, to reconnect the color of the sky so i kind of pick the same orange I'm not coloring entirely all the windows and then I'm going to brush it and I'm going to get a very, very light blue. Remember that if you don't have it, you can mix the white with the blue, you can light it up. Tap because I need to control the amount of water. I don't want the color to bleed too much, but if it does, I'm fine with it. And with this one, I kind of go over and I feel the uh, windows. I'm going to retouch that as well. And now we're going to have some fun, add some texture for the grass. You can use the same brush or you can use a thinner one as I will do. And then you're going to pick a green, brownish, whatever you want to have. We're going to kind of do some strokes. You Touch and go, touch and go, touch and go. Don't think too much and have fun. The secret is don't add too much pressure on your hand. Just touch and go, touch and go, touch and go. When you think that you need more color, Dip it into the color. This time you don't want to have too much water. You actually want to have a little more texture in the watercolor. So you will dip the brush in the water only what is necessary, but not too much because you really want to control, right? We want to really see those strokes. We don't want them to bleed or to blend in the first coat that we did together. Go to the other side, same green or another one, you do you. This is just like the fun part. When we add texture, we add details. And I know that my hands will go over, but my friends, I, I'm i doing my best to make sure that you can see all the steps and you can follow my directions. Sometimes it's not like a problem of the position of the camera. It's the way that left-hand people hold the things. Usually we hold it like that. It's a survival mode, guys. If you're left-handed, you will know. Now you play. I'm going to start to light up the green. I'm really enjoying this color palette because, as you now know, maybe some of you doesn't, you know, my the green and the blue, so the cold side of the color palette of the color wheel is definitely my favorite palette. So I am happy when I see those colors. I feel at peace. 
Now, if you want to have more of warm tone, go ahead and add some yellow, some orange, some brown. Don't limit it yourself because they teach us that the grass is green. and the Yeah, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. And even if it is, it doesn't have to be. You know what I mean? Like make your own choice. Now we're still doing pretty like a longer uh, strokes because it's still pretty close in the foreground. So it's the closest part to our eyes. I'm going to, there you go. And then little by little, we're gonna do a little less. We're gonna change the type of strokes that we use. So maybe we start to kind of do them like this, right? You don't want to do them everywhere. Maybe you just want to do them next to the road, nice and gently. Remember, you will learn if you're not here yet, the pressure of the hands is what count. You can use a different piece of paper aside and you can kind of try and try and try and exercise and do thousands of these little strokes so you will feel uh, ready. It's just about the pressure, the pressure of your hand. gonna darken them up over here because otherwise we won't see them and I'm gonna start to reduce gently the size so you see we're learning that we have different devices different way that we can create this illusion of space right a linear one point perspective sizes of things different the position of things also so the use of the space and the covers, darker, more details, maybe just slightly lighter and less details. I'm gonna dark, I'm gonna have a very dark grass over here. And this will take a little, but, you know, painting takes time and this is why we love it, uh, because we can spend some time in doing something so, beneficial for our mental and emotional health, for our fine motor skills. And you know, art just makes life better. And remember that when people say, well, I wish I could practice art, but I'm not very artistic. That's, it doesn't really matter, friends. You don't have to be an artist or artistic to practice art. Art should be part of our life because it's really beneficial for many, many things at an individual level and at a community level. So sometimes I always make the example of the sport, right? We like to play sport as kids. I used to like to play volleyball. I used to like to play um, soccer, you know, in Italy. Oh, everybody's crazy for soccer. But I knew since the very beginning that I was not going to become a professional soccer player or semi-professional, the same for volleyball, also because I'm pretty short. Still, I kept playing with my friends, right? So it's exactly the same. The fact that we know that we're not gonna become professional artists, so maybe that we don't use art in our daily life because it's not our profession, doesn't mean that we shouldn't practice or we shouldn't learn how, right? They are two very different things. So it's a st we should have the same approach that we have to sports toward art not only as I say, as individual, but also as institution, like in school. Sometimes here in the States, for example, sports are pushed so much and art, no. And which you kind of change a little bit that mindset. I always tell to my students, remember that I'm, you're not taking my classes, mostly to the middle school one, or I'm not here teaching you to become and turn you into professional artists. If some of you will like and will become, it's because it's meant to be and because it's something that you want. What I'm here to teach you are very important techniques and fine motor skills that you will be able to apply in many other fields in life. Critical thinking skill. We're gonna open your mind. You know, it's like there are so many benefits that come with art, performing and visuals. This is why arts are so fundamental for our education in school and outside the school. Now, you keep going as much as you want for your grass. I would do this forever. So at one point, I need to stop myself because I could really 
nicely and beautifully lose myself in these tiny little strokes. Look at that. And you see little by little our landscape become alive, doesn't it? If you want to add some nice touch of color, maybe to kind of connect the warmth of the sky over here, create the illusion of flowers, we can do that too. You're going to rinse your brush, tap it on the paper, and then maybe you're going to get a red, an orange, a pink, or any other of your favorite colors. And we can do tiny little tap on the paper to create basically dots, not more, because we cannot, you know, see all colors, right? like all the petals, right? Because they would be too far away. So we created the optical illusion of flower. You don't have to do it if you don't feel like. I'm gonna show you a little bit how. So in case you wanna go for it, you will be able to go for it. I will just do it here and there, just a few tiny spots of colors, right? So in this case, you see we're using a warm and on a cold color. These colors are more or less like they sit opposite in the color wheel. So they still support each other and enhance each other just differently than analogous colors do. I'm going to get some orange. I'm going to see if I can light those flowers up. Scrubby, scrubby, scrubby. Pinky, let me see. And let's see what happened over here. The same technique. I just I barely touch the paper. Tap 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 tap. Nothing more. Tap 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 tap. Don't organize them too much. They need to look natural and random. So don't think too much. Spontaneously place them as many as you want where you think that you want them. A bit more water. Let me clean up this and tap, 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 tap. There we go. So it's nice that we create these spots of colors, right? And I suggest you to do it in different, like you have a darker, a medium, a lighter, because as we say, the color that we choose will support the general color palette of a piece and we make a piece look very, very nice. Now, what I want to do is just, I'm gonna try, Take a little like a darker brown, control the amount of water, and I will just kind of do some, uh, I will spoil a little bit the road because it looks uh, too clean. <laughs> so very nice and gently. Remember when you did, uh, when we were sketching, uh, we did some of the, uh, kind of texture, implied texture. And it's also nice because you see, you kind of create a sort of a cast of shadow for the plant, which is like the shadow that these plants will reflect on the roads, right? And this one also will give your piece more interest and movement and will enhance that three-dimensionality. The optical illusion of three-dimensionality, of course, because we know that we are working on paper There we go. Now, if you want to uh, do more, go ahead and do more. I'm going to proceed to enhance uh, some of the outlines and some of the text with an extra fine markers. As I say, I'm using like the Pigma Micron, but if you add a Sharpie, it's gonna it, it, look, it will look differently, but if you wanna try for the practice, do it. The same type of very dynamic, sketchy lines, nothing perfect or too thick. We're going to proceed and see what happened. You can enhance some of the outlines or some of the value. You see, just make it a little darker. I mean, defining the line over here, I'm, you know, just really 
a chain I'm going to let's see if this one works a little better I think it's too fine yes you can basically go over and you can amplify the texture of for example bushes or plants but just by scribbling creating some scribble over here and over there some of the lines that you trace with a pencil you can follow for example the spot of the painting uh, with your marker don't overdo it my advice is that don't do it too much because otherwise you're going to color the beautiful um, texture that you created just with watercolor instead we want to really see those colors but for example in the house if you want to redefine the uh, edges of the windows and the door you want to support and enhance some of the texture of the roof uh, definitely it's very nice i love to do it like it's uh, very rewarding at the end the same for the tree you can go like gently sketching some lines on the trunk of the tree to enhance the texture and then you can do some scribbling lines on the top of the tree not too much very gentle the same is for this bush i'm gonna redefine the outlines of my windows the pattern inside maybe and the roof of the house do you want to hide the details maybe you can value maybe if you want to even do some texture on the house itself you can i will do the same for these trees not too much just some more texture on the trunk and just a slightly texture on the top just a little scribble very dynamic pressure almost none so you can move your hands quickly from one side to the other side i'm gonna probably do some lines over here but super like light kind of that you're scratching the paper basically you don't want these lines to be perfect Gonna scribble a little more over here, dark it up near the house. Then you can do very gently. I really love the work that we did with the brush, so I won't really do too much of this texture over here. Maybe just slightly here and there next to the edges of the road, just to remark basically the texture that we create with brush strokes before. and support to some of these if you want to do some like implied texture on the road that you can kind of scribbles pretend that you're doing a very abstract pebbles and maybe a little bit here dark over here some scribbles here
And when you think that you have enough, you can stop. So if you want to stop already, you will do so. And I think that I will stop here. My landscape is all done. I wanted to take a second for you to see. And now that it's everything is done, the contrast between the warmth of the background, the contrast, the cold of our foreground, that this time the foreground expand all the way to the very high line of the horizon. So we use the space differently than usual, but I show you that you can have a very balanced and harmonic design, even when you use the space in not a symmetric way or in a not perfectly balanced way. I also want you to notice the spot of light that we left and that is why I always stress the concept that when you use the color for example the green we have different tint and tone so don't use the same one because otherwise your picture will look flat instead if we alternate spot of light and darkness so the value we're going to really create interest and dynamism in our picture I'm going to switch the camera so we can say goodbye and we are all done Okay, friends, I hope that you have fun with me. This is our beautiful painting. I feel definitely refreshed and much more relaxed than I started because it was a very busy week. So I really needed this practice. I hope that you enjoyed. And once again, let me know in the comments. I'm really, really thankful and grateful for every single one of you who like my videos, practice with me, subscribe to my channel, and also the feedback that you give me and the comments where you share your personal experience and story makes me feel very connected to you all. I wish you to you all. Why I add an H, I don't know. This is what happened when you speak multiple language. Anyway, I wish you a wonderful, wonderful day and I see you next week with another practice. Ciao a tutti!